Last time, we talked about ways to deal with not having enough fabric. One was to add commercial fabric um, to your hand woven, and the other was altering the pattern itself to accommodate a narrower fabric. In this installment, we'll talk about my favorite method of uh, cheating, if you will, when you don't have enough fabric. My final cheat, which is my most favorite, is going to be illustrated right here. So that same fabric that I was just working with was not wide enough to get the full width of this sleeve. Obviously, I, I could make a seam anywhere lengthwise down the sleeve and cut the sleeve into two pieces. Now that could be a choice, but all I needed was a little triangle of fabric over here at the widest part. So my favorite cheat is to find a selvage edge of the same coloration, cut out a hunk, and butt the two together. And I'll hand sew in a ladder stitch, bringing together the weft loops of the two selvages. And then I have enough to get the full sleeve. I'll demonstrate this in a minute. But first, um, before we look at other, other garments that use this technique, I want to show where I actually did this on the other sleeve. So here, the two were joined. You cannot tell that they were two butt selvages. And all I need to do now is to finish cutting out the sleeve. And you would never know. It's the perfect cheat. This is one of my favorite dresses. I actually wove the, this originally as a run of scarves. And when I finished the scarves, I looked at them and I decided that I wasn't going to make keep them as scarves. I was actually going to make a garment out of them. I think this piece won second place in the fashion show at the Long Beach Convergence. You know, the judge later came to me and told me that, you know, she thought it was very forward and trending, and I loved that a hand weaver could be thought of in those terms. So these were nine inch scarves, and there were four of them. And if you do some simple math, four times nine is 36 inches around. I can assure you that my hips are not. 36 inches around. So what was I to do? So I had a little bit left of the scarves uh, because each of the scarves was 72 inches long. What I did was to cheat at the side seams and butt selvages. So what I'm going to do, and it's hard to see, uh, but what I'm going to do is point out where the butt selvages actually are. So here is one of them, and here is the other one, which gave me enough width to get over my hips that were not 36 inches, and here is the side seam that goes right up into the garment. And as you're moving around in this piece, you would never know that I did this cheat there. Same happens on the other side seam. So this is a piece from a Vogue Isimiyaki pattern. Obviously, it's all hand-woven. If you look at as it moves into the bottom part of the hem, it's pretty wide. And of course, it was wider than my cloth. So here, I use this same cheat. And as I move up and we zoom in, I want to show you the lower side seam of this garment. Here's the side seam. Looks pretty straightforward, and I got a really nice wedge with the coloration. Here is the original selvage of the front. I was, and here's the side seam. So I was able to butt two selvages together to give me enough width to get the full front section. Now, I could have made it narrower, I could have made it shorter. There's all kinds of things I could have done, but I really wanted the full width of this fabric in all its glory. So by doing a join there, now the same thing on the back, I actually needed 
more. So here is where I butted two selvages together and ran them right up into the side seam. So this right here is two selvages butt together and all of this fabric here was added. I love this pattern. This is my 900 bias top and it's a great way to get a summer top that's hand woven, that's colorful and that just sort of drapes over your body as any bias garment would. The problem with any bias garment though is that it eats fabric. You need a really good width in order to be able to accommodate the entire top turned on the 45 as bias is. So in order to do that, I first really wanted to test this out and I had scraps, not anything big enough to be able to get the full front and the full back turned on the 45 degree for the bias. So I got inventive and I used this same technique. So on this top, in order to get this uh, out of the scraps that I had, I took two selvages and I butt them together right here across a strategic area of the garment. You would never know that unless I pointed it out. And the same thing when you flip it over on the back, here is the join of the two butt selvages. It's very funny when I go to actually point out where some of these joins are, I have to study the piece for a bit because sometimes I actually can't find them myself. It would appear that the join is right here. And if I flip it over, the join is in the same position. When you have decent selvages, butting them together and sewing them securely by hand can make any fabric wide enough for whatever you need. Um, most often the seam is in a discreet place like under the arm or at the hem. There is no bulk and the fabric maintains the same fluid movement between the two halves. For really crisp selvages, try adding steel carabiners to the selvage threads, you know, and then hang them off the back of the loom. They will really improve your selvages. Here are two handwoven panels from probably the 70s. My late mother-in-law was a fantastic spinner and I'm pretty sure this lovely wool fabric was all hand spun. These panels along with a three inch wide strip were joined together uh, completely by hand into a long skirt and the selvages were joined together using this technique. There really weren't any seams. Um, the joined selvages ran down the sides of the skirt and one side had a zipper up at the waist and since the skirt really doesn't fit me and I love taking apart older garments that no longer work and making them into something else. This is a true test of not having enough fabric and making it work. But meanwhile, this was the perfect thing to demonstrate on, a little bit coarser weave and hopefully the contrasting dark thread will show you how I do this technique. So we want to make sure that we join them discreetly but firmly. Originally, my mother-in-law drew the selvages together with a yarn that I don't think was the same as the hand spun, but it was a wooly kind of yarn. Um, but the problem is that the yarn was very springy, so you can't really pull those selvages together perfectly. So what I want to do is show you how I do this, and I prefer to actually use sewing thread. It's really discreet, and it can pull those edges together very tightly. So I've started stitching the edges together using a contrasting heavier carpet and button thread. You would use a closely matching color of regular poly sewing thread or silk thread if you have it would be wonderful if you can get it to match. So I'm going to move back and forth ladder style uh, grabbing a weft loop grabbing a weft loop
and I'll move back and forth. And when I pull this together, you'll see that even with the dark contrasting thread, what's happening is the weft loops are actually nesting like this. So even with the dark contrasting thread, you can see how invisible that looks. Now, depending on the structure and the loft and the yarns, I may use a pointy needle or I may use a blunt tip like a tapestry needle. It kind of depends on the circumstances and there really isn't a right or wrong way to do this as long as the join holds together and is invisible. Don't be afraid of not having enough fabric. This is just another opportunity to be creative with your end goal. It's cloth. There's always a way. I'm Daryl Lancaster for The Weaver Sews.